Hello, my name is Aaron, and welcome to the third part of our Cloud on Red for Colocation discussion, Virtual Machine Packaging and Service Chain Creation. Now that we have a functioning cluster, it's time to define the various functions that our cluster will perform on user traffic. We do this via service chaining. A service chaining, as the name would imply, is the process of stitching together multiple services to achieve a desired outcome. Service chains are typically inserted into a user's transit path as they attempt to access specific services within the network. For instance, you may have a business requirement in which all traffic to and from a particular business partner must first pass through your organization's firewall, followed by a data loss prevention sensor. Similarly, another requirement might be to ensure that traffic moving from branch to branch is processed by the organization's firewall, followed by IDS IPS, minimizing malicious traffic propagation, should it infect the data network. You can have up to four devices in a service chain using Cloud on Rent for colocation. These devices can be virtual or physical in nature. Once the chain is defined, Cloud on Rent for colocation will automate the layer 2 and layer 3 stitching necessary to chain your devices together. From there, administrators can use SD-WAN policy or, in more legacy use cases, BGP or OSPF to influence traffic into the leading device of the service chain. Before we start making chains, however, we need to define the devices that will constitute our chains. As mentioned, these devices can be either physical or virtual, but for the sake of brevity, however, we'll focus just on the virtual devices, also known as virtual network functions. Cloud on Rent for Colocation utilizes Cisco's Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure Software, or NFEIS, at its heart. Virtual machines are uploaded to vManage via prepackaged tar.gz files. These bundled packages contain the following. A root disk image of the VM, which is typically in QCOW2 format, an image properties file, which lists the metadata to be used by the VM. A day zero configuration file, which is used to bootstrap the VM. And optionally, an HA day zero configuration file for those customers seeking high availability. A system generated properties file, which lists any VM variables that vManage will provide. And finally, a package manifest file, which lists all the files in the bundle, along with a SHA-256 hash of each file for integrity checking. In order to begin setup of service chaining, you will need to acquire a pre-built package or build your own custom package. Pre-built packages can be attained via your Cisco account team, who will in turn acquire them on a case-by-case -case basis from the product or engineering teams. Remember, NFEIS is a KVM hypervisor, so any VNF that supports KVM can be virtualized within Cloud on Art for colocation. On your screen, notice that the Cisco product team has certified a number of vendors for use in the solution. Don't let this list scare you away from using your own vendor of choice, however. Certified vendors are simply vendors that we've tested. It does not mean that other vendors are not supported. So for the sake of example, let's build a custom package that we can create some service chains with. In our example, let's assume that we have a service chain with one SD-WAN router. First, we need to define the router package. Navigate to the maintenance menu followed by the software repository. Click the virtual images tab. Click the button to add a custom VNF package. Provide a package name, app vendor, name, version, and type. These are all arbitrary values and can be assigned however you wish. In the image section, select the QCOW2 image of your VNF. In our case, we'll select the image that we downloaded from software.cisco.com. In the day zero configuration section, we will define the initial configuration that this virtual machine will boot with. For this section, it helps to have an existing sample configuration of your device that you can use and variableize. Click the Day0 Config File button. Click the File Upload button and select your configuration file. A mount point is required so that NFEIS knows how to properly feed the configuration file into the VNF as it boots up for the first time. Your vendor documentation should provide you with this information. In our case, the Cisco CSR uses the name iosxe underscore config dot txt. Mount points also allow you to specify multiple day zero configuration files. Each mount point then references a different day zero configuration file, allowing further flexibility when provisioning the VNF. Lastly, select whether this VNF is a standalone device or if high availability is applicable. If the VNF has HA functionality, you may specify which day zero config file is pertinent to the primary or secondary device. Cloud on for colocation can then automatically boot up the given VNF as a pair spread across multiple CSPs to provide both physical and virtual redundancy. Click the Add button followed by the link to view the configuration file. Here you can customize the configuration however necessary to fit the needs of this VNF. Now of particular note are the variable options. 
variables can take on two flavors. System variables can be defined within the configuration to allow the Cloud on Refer Colocation solution to automatically assign a value as the VNF is provisioned. These values are generally pulled from the pools that were set up during the cluster creation. For instance, variableizing the management IP will allow the system to automatically assign a management IP address from the management IP pool defined in cluster creation without prompting the user. Custom variables, however, will force the system to prompt the administrator as the VNF is being provisioned for the appropriate values to use. Unique configuration items such as hostname, IP addressing information, etc. may require custom variables. As the VNF is deployed, we'll see how these variables play into the mix further. Here, we will variableize the WAN IP address, hostname, and BGP peer. Click the Save button when finished. Scrolling down further, notice the advanced options available for the VNF. Should your VNF require an additional drive, a higher default allocation of memory and CPU, or even the ability to support SRIOV, you can tune these options here. Click the Save button when finished. The system will take a few moments to package the file. Upon completion, your new VNF package should be ready to use. Navigate to the Configuration menu, followed by Cloud on Rep for Colocation. Click on the Service Group tab. Service groups are a collection of service chains that typically serve a similar purpose. For instance, you may decide to have a partner service group with many different service chains, and each chain controls the access to unique partners or vendors. Likewise, you may decide to have a SaaS service group wherein multiple service chains within will dictate how individual SaaS application traffic is handled. Click on Create Service Group, provide a name and description for the group, and click the Add Service Chain button. Provide a name and description for your service chain. The bandwidth field serves two functions. First, it allows the solution to police traffic into and out of the service chain, ensuring this chain does not oversubscribe other chains, which may be important if you're a service provider who's providing an SLA to many customers. And second, it allows the solution to properly place the components of this chain onto a CSP that can handle the bandwidth requirement. Input and output VLANs allow you to dictate how traffic will enter the leading VNF and likewise, once processed through the chain, how traffic will exit. Oftentimes, your service provider will provide these values since they will deliver your private or public circuit, or both, off of a trunk interface into your equipment. Next, click the service chain dropdown. Select the service chain that conforms to the type you wish to provision. For sake of example, we'll create a custom chain. Here, we're given a blank canvas to build our service chain as we see fit. Since we created a router package previously, we'll add that into our service chain. Click on the router to pull up additional configuration options. First, select the image you wish the router to boot. In our case, we'll choose the package we created earlier, click the Fetch VNF Properties button, and notice the variables that appear below. Look familiar? Enter the values appropriate to your installation, and click the Configure button. Click the Save button when finished. We're now ready to attach our chain to the Cloud on for Colocation cluster. Click the ellipsis next to your new service chain and click on Attach Cluster. You can then review the configuration that will get pushed to the CSPs. After some time, your VNF should be booted and ready to go, as evidenced in the monitoring screen. If this is a Cisco SD-WAN router, you may also expect it to automatically join the SD-WAN fabric, as is the case here. In any case, you can view additional statistics of the VNF from the monitoring screens of vManage as seen on your screen. Now, bear in mind that our example shows only a single VNF. In practice, you may have several VNFs in a single chain that you wish to stream traffic through. Our next step is to start pushing traffic through our new chain. For legacy environments, this may mean that you can adjust to BGP advertisements to prefer this co-location facility, or more specifically, the leading VNF of your service chain. Remember, you variableize your BGP configuration as well, so when legacy devices come online, they can automatically form BGP peerings with downstream neighbors, automatically influencing traffic to the chain. In the case of SD-WAN, however, we have more options. We can manipulate OMP advertisements to prefer this co-location, which would allow us to take advantage of application-aware routing, or perhaps the CSR can advertise a service into OMP, in which case we can construct a service insertion policy to shuttle traffic into it. In any case, the final step of the process is to identify how you will deliver traffic to your service chain. SD-WAN makes it easy, but there are many other options.
I'd like to thank you for joining me on this video. Stay tuned for the next video in our series, Troubleshooting.